Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us from around the world. My name is Scott Sugden, Product and Technology Outreach Manager here at L Acoustics. Uh, today we have a great webinar all about third-party AV control systems with the expert in third-party AV control systems. Benjamin, how are you, sir? Thank you. Hey, for Scott. And you're calling from where, sir? Where is this uh, lovely uh, confined apartment located at? Ah. Uh, to tell you, I have a nice view over Paris here in France. It's oh, shiny fantastic. and uh, it's uh, lacking a lot of pollution these days. Oh, good. And how are the uh, baguettes? Still uh, still as good as always? Uh, yes, probably. I, I I don't take the opportunity to go and buy some okay. these days, well, but uh, I hope so. I Excellent. Well, that's that's definitely one of the things I miss the most is a uh, French, uh, uh, what is it, cheese. a baguette traditional and uh, some cheese. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, getting to see you in person again and having some cheese, wine, and a baguette. Um, so today we're talking all about third-party AV control systems. So this is what, Crestron, Extron, and QSYS pre predominantly? Yeah, these are the, you will see that in the presentation, but uh, mostly these are the three, the three solutions we're going to talk about. Great, and joining us in the Q&A is one of our application engineers who's an expert on this as well. Um, Jordan, you're coming to us live from sunny Southern California. It looks like a beautiful day in your apartment. Oh, Jordan, you're muted, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that, Jordan. Missed a pickup in uh, theater parlay. Um, that's, a, right. that's a note. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Jordan. All right, uh, thanks guys, great. Uh, great to be back. Um, hope everyone's doing well out there and hope I can answer any of your questions that you've got down in the chat. Excellent. So uh, we're going to get started, Benjamin, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to you and you've got a bit of a presentation and a demo as well. So uh, everyone enjoy and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you guys very much. So let me move to the presentation. So thank you for joining everyone wherever you are in the world today. Uh, I'm Benjamin. I'm uh, in the application department of uh, Acoustics, and I work in the design engineer department and especially with AV control systems, third party applications and a bit of interoperability as well. So it's been uh, it's been two years now almost that I'm with uh, Acoustics, and uh, I'm really enjoying uh, taking charge of all these uh, topics and uh, from time to time meeting you on the field or on the trade shows and discussing these topics and uh, trying to get a feel of what are the tendencies, what are the best practices, what are the uh, upcoming solutions that you would like to see um, implemented uh, with the projects and etc. So, um, I want to start from basics. Uh, probably most of you already know the basic control workflow that we have with the acoustics drive system. So in this basic workflow, all of the Ethernet control to the drive system um, is done from LA Network Manager software. So LA Network Manager is a very well-known uh, tool from sound system engineers that do with L Acoustics. It's been used for uh, more than 10 years, 10 years now on the field in touring applications mostly. And with this application, the control is done over TCP IP socket and thanks to the LNet that you probably already know. So LA Network Manager handles uh, three steps during the system setup, uh, namely setup, tuning, and live. And you can find these three big buttons inside of LA Network Manager software. It's arranged in a streamlined manner, and this is mostly adapted for sound system engineers using this during their uh, installation phase and system calibration. However, this last of the three step live uh, generally re refers to show running in touring applica applications. In fixed installation, we do not necessarily want someone uh, in front of a LA network manager screen at all times because it's going to be used every day. 
sometimes during uh, during night shows, during uh, conferences, etc. Uh, so it's perfectly fine to just turn the software off and put it away and use it only during calibrations and maybe maintenance from time to time. The drive system will continue working as expected, even if you turn off the software, because it's memorizing all of the uh, parameters and settings inside of the physical devices. So it can remain on all the time, if you like. There's no issue with that. Or you can turn it off and on using the, the front panel buttons of the amplifiers and the processors, or with external current breakers, for example. But this is when you this is when you have the system just standalone. And here we're more interested in advanced scenarios where we're not satisfied with just a standalone and non-communicating sound system. So what if we want something else to communicate with our amplifiers and processors other than network manager? So I try to identify the top reasons why we would introduce third-party control for our solutions. And I'm trying to um, split that into two point of views, actually. Uh, the point of view of the system integrator and the point of view of the sound system engineer. So just to explain, system integrators, there are companies responsible for assembling and commissioning the whole AV solution for one specific project. This sometimes goes way beyond the AV, including uh, security, HVAC, con uh, building constructions, uh, and many more. Um, so these system integrators are generally the, the main contractor for the project, and also at the same time, a L Acoustics certified partner, CPI, we call them. And the sound system engineer is the person uh, performing the system calibration. He's the one who comes in when everything's installed and he needs to tune the system so that, so that he sounds good and so that the system fulfills the SPL and response requirements for the venue. So what do, what, why would these uh, two uh, parties, I would say, require uh, remote control of the system? So for a system integrator, first thing, they want monitoring meaning that they want to make sure that the drive system works fine and they want to be notified if any error or failure is occurring to ensure that, uh, they, that they're performing proper maintenance. And this is especially th true uh, in EVAC situations and I, I will detail it a bit more further in the, in the presentation. Uh, also, they want automation meaning they want to combine the control between the PA together with other AV systems like lighting, lighting, like video projection screen, automatic mixing of sources, uh, etc. Mm. Management of access rights uh, might be important. L Acoustics already offers uh, three-level right access management within LA Network Manager, but this is not always uh, sufficient, like pin code, etc. Uh, but here, the control system can go beyond and uh, maintain a user database, put limitations and restrictions according on who you are when you log in, what you can do, and keep uh, records of who is logging in, etc. So this puts a bit of security uh, for the access to the system. And uh, last of the four uh, topics I identified for system integrator is interoperability. This could mean multiple things, actually. Uh, here we're talking about control. But in general, uh, system integrators will appreciate when products from different manufacturers claim some sort of interoperability or integration thanks to partnerships or certifications. And this is what we try to do. And we, we do communicate with uh, the manufacturers uh, to build these connections. And I will name them uh, further on. 
So what about the sound system engineer concerns? I would say his main concern is uh, sound consistency. Tweaking parameters in LA Network Manager without being properly trained and without having been involved actually in the calibration phase of this specific project can harm the quality of the PA response. Uh, if some users need to operate the sound system in some way, it's preferable that it's preferable that they do it from another interface than the tuning tool of the system engineer. And of course, if we already know that some non-trained users are going to need to operate the system, then probably they need uh, an intuitive and user-friendly uh, interface to do so, protecting them from doing some errors and exposing to them only the parameters that they need to access. So uh, when you're sound system engineer, you want to make sure that no one is going to mess around with the, with the calibration. So it is better if you have these remote control tools at hand. And in some situations, and it's quite specific to performing art standards or maybe sports venues, uh, you might have prepared multiple tunings for your system. Uh, when your venue is for multi-purpose or when you have some pieces of the PA that sometimes is taken away, like delay, uh, delay speakers and things like this, maybe you want to have uh, be able to recall multiple presets for gain or EQ or delay. And this is, uh, and you want them to be triggered by the AV control system and not by a network manager. So there are other nice stuff that can be brought by remote control. But I believe that these are the, the main, the main thing that are motivating, motivating us for uh, improving these connections and, and, uh, and developing them. So I've been talking about AV control system, but maybe all of you are not very familiar with uh, what this is. So to put it short, the AV control system is the central brain for an AV installation. It takes the form of a hardware platform in general, like a controller or processor or a computer with embedded software inside. Sometimes it can be software only, then it requires you to buy some piece of computer to, to run it. So this central brain implements one or more of, uh, of these features, orchestration of all of the AV equipment, um, audio and video streams distribution or processing, like EQ compressing, matrix mixer, transmitting from point to point via analog AES or even audio over uh, IP. And also uh, exposing user machine interfaces through touchscreens or panels so that you can have some input from the, from the humans to the, to the system. For example, in home automation, this can be a simple uh, Google Home or uh, Apple HomePod or uh, Amazon Alexa that you might know, controlling a TV or uh, wireless uh, speakers, for example. All this can be more complex in, uh, in big uh, home theater installations like um, big houses where it's handling the front door camera or the heating or energy system or security and alarm, etc. It can be quite complex. Yet yeah, we are more focused here on corporate environments when talking about L acoustics deployments. So in corporate environments, AV control systems typically handle meeting rooms management with microphones, cameras, screens, streaming, and room scheduling. Building management as well, like HVAC lighting, handling the auditorium's usage, background music in the hall, and things like this. Uh, custom logic programming, like uh, because these systems are programmable, either visually or through scripting coding. 
And lastly, uh, monitoring and reporting, like exposing some dashboards, um, a record of error to logs, uh, sending notifications to uh, important people, um, managing also sometimes remote access to the system from internet and between sites of the company. So AV control system can be small to large. In general, it's very scalable. And uh, there are plenty of, uh, plenty of, I would say, companies and manufacturers that uh, do this kind of systems. But we will focus more during this presentation on those that are most chosen in the projects where acoustics is also uh, at stake. So uh, I'll give you just a basic drawing of how it works to, uh, and especially when it comes to controlling the acoustics equipment. So I explained the, the, the three phases here. There's a first step when the EV control system is not involved that you may already know, which is the sound system engineer is commissioning the PA thanks to LA network manager. So he's doing the initial setup and tuning or more advanced operations. And then when he's finished, LA network manager is put aside. Then comes the design programmer. So he's the one uh, using the programming software uh, provided by the AV control system solution. So he is using the acoustics tool available in his programming software, additionally to the native uh, tools of the software. And then he has the choice of the parameters he wants to be used in the system in this installation for controlling the PA system, like mute and gain or delay or whatever. Uh, he then designs his program, his custom logic, creates nice user interfaces for the touchscreens. And then when he's done, final phase is just pushing the program he designed to the control processor. And then the processor starts communicating via Ethernet with the PA, as well as plenty of the AV stuff, probably. Optionally, uh, the AV control system can also provide the audio uh, for the PA, even though it's not mandatory. Uh, it's not always the case, and if the AV control system offers AVB connectivity, uh, this is even more interesting because you would have a uh, audio over IP uh, connectivity to the PA system. But it's just a case by case because it's not always possible to do it. So there are three solutions we're compatible with. Uh, QSIS from QSC based in America. Um, they work what we call plugins that you can drag and drop inside of your design. So Anacoustics uh, develops its own plugin for controlling P1 and all of the amplifiers of the of our product range. Uh, the first plugin was released in 2018, so two years ago with LA4X and 12X, and later came a plugin for um, P1 and then also for LA4 and LA8. And whenever our new amplifier LA2XI is available on the market, uh, we will have a new plugin released for it as well. Um, compatibility is ensured with QSIS Designer version 7.1 and later. Crestron works with what we call modules. It's the same principle, but not the same uh, name that you can add to your program. The first module was released back in 2011, so almost 10 years ago, and it was fully rewritten uh, last year, including all amplifiers and P1 as well. And of course, LA2XA, 2XI will be included in the module's compatibility when it's, when it's released. Um, following the rewrite of the plugin last year it's now only compatible with three series processors only not anymore with two series 
And last, Xtron works with uh, what they call drivers. Uh, here it's a bit different because Xtron are developing themselves the driver based on our um, instructions. Whereas for QSys and Creston, we are the uh, the, develop the developers for these plugins and modules. Um, a new version of the driver will be coming shortly, and I will talk about it uh, later, what this new version is. Um, I won't be able to show you any of Xtron um, because um, I've not been through any of the Xtron training program yet. And also, I don't have any Xtron uh, equipment with me right now. Uh, just a quick reminder, um, a few days ago, we released a new drive system uh, package uh, for, with LA Network Manager and a new firmware 2.10.1. Just want to um, insist on this, beware you need, if, if you want to update, I mean for existing installations using QC's Crystal or Xtron and controlling the uh, Alacoustics uh, drive system, if you want to update your drive system to this release, 2.10.1, please be aware, uh, be aware that uh, they, it's introducing a compatibility break, so you will need to update your third-party controllers before with the latest versions that I'm mentioning here uh, above. Okay, so you want to update first the drive system, um, it will still be compatible with uh, current versions of the uh, of the firmware, no problem. So you check that everything will working fine, and then you can update your uh, amplifier and processor with the latest version, and it should all be smooth. So you have the list of um, AV control solutions and which equipment you can control with. But now, what about uh, the list of what you can do? So I've been uh, writing this list here uh, so that you have a direct view on everything that's possible. The most, uh, I would say, sought features are the simplest in general, standby and mute. Yet the firmware offers a variety of commands that I display here in, in black, uh, some feedbacks and notifications that I display in gray here and also more commands and feedbacks available for the P1 that I've been displaying here in, in a gold color. I will bring more details about some of these parameters in the following demos, namely uh, the presets and configurations for amplifiers and P1, and uh, PAVA faults and loudspeaker monitoring. Um, during my demos, if there is anything you see here in this list or uh, on the screens that's tickling your uh, curiosity and you would like to know more, please don't hesitate to uh, drop in a question and, uh, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to answer it if I, if I get it, uh, if it gets up to me. I'm going now to move forward to the demos, uh, but maybe I can, uh, make a pause here to know with you, Jordan, or with you, Scott, if there are any questions so far about what I've been saying. Uh, Benjamin, so far it's been pretty quiet on the question front. There's a few little things that have come in, but it seems like uh, Jordan's been able to handle that. I will uh, get back with you as some more coming in uh, over the next few minutes and let you know what we have. Okay, just don't hesitate to um, to stop me if there's a question. Maybe it makes uh, sense to answer it uh, instantly. So let's go to the demo side of the webinar. I'll try not to uh, mess around with uh, screen sharing. So um, let's start with QSIS. So first, how to get uh, the Alacoustics plugins. This is very simple. You just go to Alacoustic website. And in the support section, you have a download center button. And here you can see in the filtering checkboxes that there is a entry, especially for our QSIS plugin. So we just check this and boom, you have two of them. 
two zip files. One is containing all of the AMPS plugins, and one is containing the P1 plugin. Okay, I'm not going to show you how to install them. Just uh, bear in mind that inside the zip file you have the plugins, and you also have a PDF explaining what's inside, how to install, a brief description of what it does. So. Uh, if you need more information about an installation and basic stuff, I encourage you to just download and, uh, and uh, go through it. Okay, so now I'm going to um, open QSIS Designer, latest version, and I'm going to do a um, walk around the house for you, a little overview. So if you're not familiar with this interface, this is so QSIS Designer. It's the programming tool for the QSIS systems. Uh, when you open it, it's blank like this. Um, and if you have a look on the right hand side here and you expand the plugin folder, you can see that I have an LQ6 folder here and this is what you will have if you install the plugins. So it's quite straightforward if I have 84X here next to me. And if I want to control it, I just drag this on the playground. And this brings a rectangle, which is called a component here in, uh, in the design. And when I click on it, and I have a few properties here, parameters, where I can type in the IP address and I have, I have a few options. OK, so let's say if I had um, here I have two two amplifiers and one P1. So if I, I want to control all of them, I just have to drag all of these on the playground, or I just also can copy paste and then change the property. So I just show you an example. I'm going to type in the IP address of my LA4X here and the IP address of my P1 as well. Okay. So when I double click on the component, it's going to open uh, the UI, the, um, the, yeah, I think it's called the UI, uh, the window actually of the component. And it's gonna, you can see here that you have a bunch of controls. These are called controls. It can be uh, text boxes, faders, buttons, uh, status views, things like this. If you already know QSIS, you know what I'm talking about. So, I'm just going to enter into emulation mode here uh, to simulate uh, the presence of a core and establish the connection to my app. So you can see here that I'm connected. I can even see the firmware that's inside of my amplifiers and I can start accessing mute buttons, etc. Okay. So let me um, go directly to a um, small example. I'm not going to go through all of the parameters here. Uh, I think they are quite self-explanatory and you can explore on your site if you like. But um, I'm going to go into one of the, uh, I would say unknown, uh, unknown features because you would not have them into a network manager and it might be interesting to kind of understand how, how the plugin works and what it can do. So here I, I clicked on my uh, component here and I've been enabling this uh, property here, enable PAVA. And I'm also enabling uh, the property that appeared here called read impedance and you will understand why just in a few seconds. So let me run the emulation mode. Okay. So now I'm connecting again to my LA4X and I enabled the PAVA feature of the amplifier. So what I'm going to do here, I have a um, small X4I connected to my output three of the amplifier. And I'm going to use the feature of the plugin to monitor the presence of the speaker. So whenever I unplug the, the speaker, I should get an uh, alarm. Okay, so it happens here in this section. So uh, I know it's on the output three and I've been writing down the impedance thresholds uh, that I should be using. Okay, so 8, 4, 14, 6. Determining these thresholds, uh, I'm not explaining now because this is something we do uh, on case by case 
during the, the uh, during the setup of the of the system, and this is not something yet uh, open to um, to uh, I would say um, uh, end users, and uh, this is something we do for the moment. The acoustics determining the these thresholds, but yeah, yet here I'm uh, writing them down, and I will also reduce the the time interval between every test uh, it could be close to uh, one minute but I, I, I would like it better to have it every three seconds so you you better see what i'm doing here okay so here you can see that um the amplifier is detecting the impedance that's present at two frequencies uh on my speaker what it's doing it's it's playing a tone into the inaudible frequency range so uh, here I am at uh, 20 kilohertz and 16 hertz. It's doing this because it's trying to check if the speaker is still here, but it does not want to be, I don't want tone to be heard. Let's say if I, if I put it here to uh, one kilohertz, maybe you will hear it. Okay, do you hear that? Okay, so we, we don't want to hear this. So this is why um, the, the diaphragm of the speaker is, is moving a bit thanks to this tone, and it's allowing me to calculate the impedance that's going through the cable. So let me uh, just unplug my speaker now. Okay. So the next test after three seconds, now I can see that I have a problem uh, because it, the impedance is way too high. So it's even seeing me uh, saying me that output uh, three has open circuit. Okay, this is one of the PAVA features like uh, loudspeaker monitoring, and I can even simulate a short circuit by connecting the two wires together, and you can see that the impedance is dropping. Okay. So this kind of feature uh, is useful when the PA is also used for evacuation messages. And you want to be checking at all times that you are sure that the system is working and that it can, uh, it can broadcast the evacuation messages uh, because the, the life of people is at stake here. Okay, so that was one example of a feature. I'm going to... Um, show you the exact same example but with another design that i i prepared beforehand uh, because i've been creating a user interface for it as well here we're only manipulating the the plugin itself but in the real life you're going to want to put a user interface in front of the of the end user for doing this OK, so that's my uh, design. Uh, so you can see I've been implementing uh, some custom logic here in addition to uh, what the plugin just offers me. <clears throat> and you can see that I also have enabled speaker monitoring on output three, and I also put three seconds in the time interval. And let's start it again. Emulation. OK, so I'm connected. I can see here thanks to the I'm not sure if you can see it. I can see thanks to the output meter that I do have some audio coming out of the output module. And this is uh, these are these uh, testing tones. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to the user control interface I've built to show it to you. And this is a nice representation of uh, some controls and some feedback of the plugins. So I, I changed some LEDs into arrows, and I put some uh, some buttons with a with a chosen color and and uh, and um, how do you say look and feel look and feel. So I'm going to do again the same uh, simulation on the arrow. I'm doing open circuit for my speaker, like unplugging it, and now uh, I can uh, show that there is an arrow on a on a monitoring screen inside of the monitoring room, for example, and I know exactly that I have a problem with this, exactly this speaker, 
and I, I don't need to be trained on the plugin to understand that. OK. So that was my small example about um, what can a uh, user interface look like thanks to QSys and and how do we implement it? But I encourage you to follow the, the trainings um, that are uh, available for QSys online. I'll give you a, more, a bit more details at the end of presentation. OK, so now I want to go into um, another example with QSys and we'll be talking about um, the amplifier configurations. So if you, let me remove that. I'm going to create a new one here. If you're really familiar with uh, Alacoustics uh, drive system, you already know the presets, the user presets. So when uh, when performing the, the system tuning thanks to LA Network Manager, you can save multiple presets inside of the amplifiers and you can recall them uh, whenever is necessary. But you might also know that presets do not include group parameters. Group parameters in Network Manager include EQ, uh, more gain and more delay information, and you're not able to change that using only presets. There's a feature that's only available in the QSIS plugin and it's called configurations. It's over here. So it's kind of super presets that you cannot use with LA Network Manager. LA Network Manager cannot recall or store them, but they are storing also the group parameters uh, that's present inside of the, the amplifiers when you store them. So that's interesting. Let me go through an example and you understand what I mean. So let me run this. Uh, oh, sorry. I forgot to type in the proper IP address. Okay, 101. Okay. So I'll run the emulation mode and make sure it's connected. Good. I forgot. I need to enable this feature on the plugin. Sorry. There is an enable configurations option here. And they'll also an enable configuration store because I want to store them, not just recall them. OK, now I believe we're good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, restore the different uh, tunings I would like to be recalled from QSIS. And for this, I'm going to need Network Manager because the Network Manager sessions uh, contain the different tunings I prepared. So I'm going to use it. So just let me start LA Network Manager. And I've been preparing a few sessions with different EQs. Let me bring it to the screen. There we go. Smaller. Good. OK, so. Here I prepared three network manager session files. Each of them is a potential tuning for the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load them one by one with network manager and then store them into the amplifier's memory thanks to QSIS plugin. So let's start with conference. OK, so you can see here that I applied some kind of EQ to uh, the outputs of my amplifiers. I go online. OK. And I can check on my amplifier that I do have yeah, I can see here the name of the group conference. So I, I know that it's loaded inside the amplifier. If I had a real system, I could uh, also um, check my ear that it's the proper sound. And then I'm going to call this conference on the QSIS uh, plugin. And I'm hitting the store button of one of my configurations. OK, so what I did is I uh, snapshot the state of the amplifiers inside the memory. So I'm going back now to 
network manager, I'm loading the other tuning DJ set, for example. It store to the memory of the amplifier. And third, tuning sports. Sports store. Okay, cool. So now um, I stored three configurations inside of the amplifier. If I had multiple amplifiers, I could have done it on multiple amplifiers at the same time using the custom log logic of QSYS, who can go and click the store buttons of multiple plugins at once. So now I go offline. I don't even need network manager anymore. I could close it and even put away the, the computer that's, that holds it. And now in order to recall my uh, configurations, I can just use these buttons. And the nice thing is that the name of the configuration is appearing instead of the preset name. It means that also on the front panel of the amplifiers, you will have the name of the configurations. So it tells you that the amplifier is currently using a configuration and not a preset. So thanks to this, we're able to recall different EQ and delay uh, settings and tunings. Um, and I'm sure we can think of plenty of different applications for this, but namely, if you want to remove some delay or we want to change your FIR structure or anything like this, that can be useful. Bear in mind that there is a limitation of eight uh, slots per amplifier, but you don't have to store uh, sessions one to one to the configurations. I mean, you can, uh, you can, uh, or even during a recall, like I can recall the configuration 201 on one amplifier and 202 on another one and 203 on another one. So it's uh, kind of free, but you need to know what you're doing here, of course. Important thing don't use Network Manager and configurations at the same time because uh, Network Manager will overwrite whatever you recall uh, as soon as you click somewhere and they're not meant to work in conjunction. There is no issue connecting Network Manager when you want to overwrite. For example, if you have a, um, if you have a, um, a band with a guest system, engineer, um, uh, guest system engineer and he wants to do some tweaks to your system just for the show, it's no problem you have network manager during the show. And when he when the show is done and everyone's gone, you just recall back your default configuration for your venue and we're all set. Okay, so configurations are available only in QSYS plugin for now. If you believe this would be something nice for Extron or Crestron, or you're thinking about a future project that's having these two other solutions and could benefit from configurations, don't hesitate to tell us. Uh, we generally move on the feedback from the field when, when we want to add some features and things like this. Okay. No. Questions on the QSYS side from your side, Scott or, or, uh, or Jordan? There was one question a while ago and I thought we would get back to it and maybe you want to jump there real quick, um, uh, which was just about the different features. Um, it was that slide you had with the three color sets and, and maybe with QSYS it's a good way to explain what the different things can do in terms of uh, direct control monitoring versus additional functionality. Mm. Okay. So uh, let's hope this is answered. Never mind uh, if people have more answers even during the webinar and then didn't get any answer. Uh, sorry, if they have questions and don't get the answer or if they have more questions later on, I will give you a, a way of contacting us to, uh, to have more uh, details. So I'll wrap it up for QSYS for now and I move on to uh, Crestron. So, First, how to download our Crestron modules. You simply go to the Crestron application market. You can see the uh, URL here. 
And on the main page in the modules manufacturers, you go to L Acoustics. There. And here you can see we have three, three modules available. We have two for the uh, amplifiers and one for the processor. Again, I'm not going to show you how to um, install these. If you're already a Crestron programmer, you probably know. Uh, there's also a PDF provided with these modules explaining how to use them. Uh, and also, uh, I'm, I'm adding also release notes and a few more information inside this PDF. So let me jump to the Crestron software. It's called Simple Windows. So for, inf for your information, our modules are simple sharp uh, modules embedded into uh, simple plus modules themselves embedded inside simple modules. These are for the people who already know this stuff. But you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's just already accessible directly from simple windows. So simple windows is the programming tool for Crestron processors. It's not the only one available on the market, but this is the one uh, you need to use if you want to use that acoustics uh, modules. So when you start it, you can see here on the left, uh, I have installed the uh, modules inside my user modules folder, and you can see the three of them here. So let me just create a um, dummy program here, and I'm going to do a quick overview of these modules for you. So first I'll show you the um, Amplify Controller Advanced module. This is the one containing all of the features available for, uh, for our Crestron. The way it looks, uh, this is what is called a symbol inside Crestron. It's, it makes me think of an electronic chip actually where you have some input and output buses, but these are called signals here. Input signals on the left and output signals on the right. And generally speaking, you have the commands on the input signals like uh, online, standby, mute, etc. And then you have the feedback on the right on the outputs. Uh, you can see here all the list of what's available. I'm not going to show you how to program this. Uh, there's plenty of things to learn on the uh, training and certification programs of Crestron. But I'm uh, just going to show you also the basics version of this plugin because this is the comprehensive one. We have access to everything. And then you have the basics with just a small selection of what's the most useful things or the most demanded things. Why did we do uh, two modules? Uh, we decided to do a secondary module um, when we realized that sometimes having plenty of modules uh, may um, stress a bit too much the CPU of the, of the processor. So if you wanna just use the simple, um, simple commands or feedbacks, uh, it might be better to just use the basics it's less going to stress the network and less going to stress the CPU. And if it's enough for you, I encourage you to, to do it. Okay. So if you have 2000, uh, 2000, 200 amplifiers, it might be a good solution to try and not eat all of the power of the processor. And the last one is the P1. So this one has plenty of, plenty of inputs and outputs like mute gain preamps fallbacks namely uh, please go through the have a look at the pdf including with the with the module to to learn what all these things do um, to show you an example why i will directly i'm not going to go through the programming and uh, uploading to the to the processor because i, I have a small processor here uh, rmc3 it's already loaded with a with a program uh, I prepared and that you have access to when you, you when you download actually the, the module. So I will directly show you the uh, the final result. So let me go to the UI project. I'm going to simulate a touch screen here.
So I'm manually connecting to my RMC3. There we go. So I'm connected to my program, which is actually um, controlling all of the available parameters for a P1. So if I connect to my P1, I'm online here. I can see the firmware version of it. And here you have a tab for all of the available parameters like input, gains and mutes, a few input settings, fallback settings, DSP buses, uh, matrix routing, and output levels. And that's the main status. Um, I'm going to do one example with the configuration so that you can uh, see uh, how to use the how to use this example program so i'm going to do a bit like what i did with the amplifier i'm going to create two configurations inside of the p1 to be able to recall them directly from crystal so i'm again going to use a network manager here and then i'm going to load a session i prepared with two aq settings Okay, so there you can see that I put some specific EQ on my on my DSP buses, and I'm going to load this inside of the P1. Okay, so now it's synced. I'm going to save uh, this to the configuration slot one of my P1, but for this I need to uh, I need to go offline for a network manager. So you, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm on my P1 front panel going into configurations, store, I'm saying the first slot, and I'm going to call it EQ, EQ A, okay, store. Then you see here, instantly on the Crestor interface that I now have a configuration in slot one. So let me go online again. I'm going to load my uh, second session. OK, I go offline because if I don't go offline, I'm not able to access the configurations menu on the P1. So I'm going into store slot number two. I'm going to name this EQ. B in store. There we go. So I'm done. Uh, I can put Network Manager away now if I like. And directly from Crestone, I'm able to load the configuration on my P1. So let's say, let's imagine, uh, let's imagine I, I have one configuration for uh, using the microphone uh, on the stage for a uh, presenter and another one with uh, four microphones and different EQ when you have a, let's say, an unplugged concert on the stage, for example, whatever. I'm uh, improvising on this. And I'm able to recall them uh, directly from Crestron without going through Network Manager. And uh, here I stored only EQ in them, but all of these settings are saved with the configurations. So this is one example of how to use the P1. Okay. And that's it for the Crestron demo. Do you happen to have seen any more questions in the chat? uh so far well benjamin you're doing a great job of explaining everything so there haven't been too many <laughs> questions uh at this point um cool. so i think uh um, i think we're pretty well covered in from yeah, there okay. so i'll draw that to my conclusion um just a quick note i have been through some things without explaining everything uh on the qc's cholesterol softwares if you're not familiar with them and you would like to learn more, I encourage you to go and check the uh, uh, training and certification programs that these companies offer, namely the level one and two for QSIS and a CTIP 101, 201, 301 for Crestron. 
and also Crystal has ECS and ECP uh, trainings that you can enroll with. Uh, personally, I've been following the QC level one online and it was way more a way enough to uh, to learn how to use a plugin like like the one we're doing now and also ctip uh, the three cti programs uh, you see here were very uh, very interesting to uh, how to program uh, crystal okay so um, just check out their websites if you need to enroll and uh, finally if you have any more questions on everything related to third party control uh, without acoustics, we have a special uh, email address that you see here on your screen. I'll be uh, happy to answer your question and have your feedback if you if you believe that, oh, uh, it's cool that you have this feature, but it would be even nicer if you implement this way or why don't you have this feature available? I think it's relevant for my project. Uh, we're always happy to have some feedback from the field and uh, actually chat with you about these topics. And that's my thank you. Last slide. Oh, Benjamin, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, this was a great uh, presentation on what we can do with uh, external AV control systems. Um, and I, obviously, as, as was mentioned, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your local L acoustics application engineer or that uh, email address uh, to uh, answer any of those questions specifically. Um, today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Our next webinar is on Thursday. We're going to do some advanced uh, presentations on Aliza mixing. So that'll be all about uh, um, how to do dynamic automation within the Elisa ecosystem. So please come back for that. And on Friday, we have a conversation with the front house engineer and systems engineer from the Mark Knopfler tour. So please join us on Friday as well. Thank you guys very much. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Benjamin, thank you for the great presentation. Jordan, thank you for helping out in the Q&A. My pleasure. Um, and we will see everyone real soon and have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye.